fermented beverages. Throughout the 10,000 or so years that humans have been drinking fermented beverages, they've also been arguing about their merits and demerits. The debate still simmers today, with a lively back and forth over whether alcohol is good for you or bad for you. Heavy drinking is a major cause of preventable death in most countries. In the US, alcohol is implicated in about half of fatal traffic accidents. Heavy drinking can damage the liver and heart, harm an unborn child, increase the chances of developing breast and some other cancers. It contributes to depression and violence, and interferes with relationships. The active ingredient in alcoholic beverages, a simple molecule called ethanol, affects the body in many different ways. It directly influences the stomach, brain, heart, gallbladder, and liver. It affects levels of lipids, cholesterol and triglycerides, and insulin in the blood, as well as inflammation and coagulation. It also alters mood, concentration, and coordination. The harmful use of alcohol is a causal factor in more than 200 disease and injury conditions. Worldwide, 3 million deaths every year result from harmful use of alcohol. This represents 5.3% of all deaths. Overall, 5.1% of the global burden of disease and injury is attributable to alcohol, as measured in disability adjusted life years dailies. Beyond health consequences, the harmful use of alcohol brings significant social and economic losses to individuals and society at large. Alcohol consumption causes death and disability relatively early in life. In people aged 20 to 39 years, approximately 13.5% of total deaths are attributable to alcohol. There is a causal relationship between harmful use of alcohol and a range of mental and behavioral disorders, other non-communicable conditions and injuries. The risks of drinking too much. Regularly drinking more than 14 units of alcohol a week risks damaging your health. The recommended weekly limit of 14 units is equivalent to 6 pints of average strength beer or 10 small glasses of low strength wine. New evidence around the health harms from regular drinking has emerged in recent years. There's now a better understanding of the link between drinking and some illnesses, including a range of cancers. The previously held position that some level of alcohol was good for the heart has been revised. It's now thought that the evidence on a protective effect from moderate drinking is less strong than previously thought. No safe drinking level. If you drink less than 14 units a week, this is considered low risk drinking. It's called low risk rather than safe because there's no safe drinking level. Complications of alcohol. It causes liver damage. Alcohol is a toxin, and it's your liver's job to flush it out of your body. But your liver may not be able to keep up if you drink too much too fast. Cirrhosis Alcohol can kill liver cells, and lead to scarring called cirrhosis. Long-term heavy use of alcohol also may give you alcoholic fatty liver disease, a sign that your liver doesn't work as well as it should. Heavy drinking takes a toll on the liver, and can lead to a variety of problems and liver inflammations including Steatosis, or fatty liver, alcoholic hepatitis, fibrosis, cirrhosis, heart disease. You may know about the dangers of blood clots and high levels of fats and cholesterol in your body. Alcohol makes both things more likely. Studies of heavy drinkers also show that they are more likely to have trouble pumping blood to their heart and may have a higher chance of dying from heart disease. Drinking a lot over a long time or too much on a single occasion can damage the heart, causing problems including Cardiomyopathy, stretching and drooping of heart muscle Arrhythmias, irregular heartbeat, stroke, high blood pressure Brain and nervous system problems Alcohol affects the brain's communication pathways This makes it harder for you to think and speak clearly, remember things, make decisions, and move your body Heavy drinking also can cause mental health issues like depression and dementia. You may get painful nerve damage that may linger long after you sober up. It causes anemia. This is when your body doesn't make enough healthy red blood cells to move oxygen around. That may give you ulcers, inflammation, and other problems. Too much booze may also make you more likely to skip meals, which can shortchange your body of iron. It causes cancer. There is a clear link between heavy alcohol use and many types of cancers. Alcohol can damage the cells in your mouth, throat, voice box, and esophagus. 
It can lead to cancers in your liver, breast, and intestines. Alcohol can help cancer causing chemicals in tobacco and other sources enter your cells more easily. It causes seizures. Long-term alcohol abuse may raise your chances for epilepsy. And alcohol withdrawal after heavy drinking can cause seizures. It flares up gout. This form of arthritis results from painful buildup of uric acid in the joints. You can get gout from eating too much food high in chemicals called purines, which include red meat, shellfish, and alcohol, especially beer and liquor. It leads to infections. Heavy drinking can hamper your immune cells from fighting off viruses and bacteria. It also can harm your liver, which plays an important role in your immune system by making antibacterial proteins. It results in digestive problems. Booze is caustic. It can inflame the stomach lining, causing heartburn and nausea. Over time, this can give you ulcers and chronic inflammation in your stomach, esophagus, and gut. It can also make it harder for your intestines to digest important nutrients like B12 and thiamine. Alcohol can also cause a buildup of digestive enzymes in the pancreas, leading to a condition called pancreatitis, or an inflamed pancreas. This can affect how much insulin you make, putting you at higher risk for diabetes. It affects your sleep. Knocking back a lot of drinks may knock you out at night. But once the sedative effect wears off, it can disrupt or lower the quality of your sleep. Binge drinking too often can make it harder to fall asleep and stay asleep. It can also increase snoring and sleep apnea, making it hard to get a good night's rest. It affects your immune system. Drinking too much can weaken your immune system, making your body a much easier target for disease. Chronic drinkers are more liable to contract diseases like pneumonia and tuberculosis than people who do not drink too much. Drinking a lot on a single occasion slows your body's ability to ward off infections, even up to 24 hours after getting drunk. How can drinking too much affect me? Drinking too much alcohol can damage your health more. It's associated with despair, depression and suicide. Fetal alcohol syndrome, if exposed to alcohol before birth. Accidents, like falls or burns, and injuries, like fractures or drowning. Blackouts, assaults, DUIs and even homicide. Frequent or heavy drinking can also lead to personal problems, such as trouble with money, personal relationships, work. Alcohol is never good for people under 40, global study finds. Largest project of its kind concludes young people should not drink at all but small amount may benefit older adults. The study, the first to report risk by age, sex and region, found that between the ages of 15 and 39 alcohol provided no health benefits and posed dangers. Alcohol carries significant health risks and no benefits for young people but some older adults may gain from drinking a small amount, according to the largest study of its kind. The conclusion comes from the authors of the Global Burden of Diseases study. It is a rolling project based at the University of Washington in Seattle, which produces the most comprehensive data on the causes of illness and death in the world. Four years ago the study said that even the occasional drink was harmful to health, and suggested governments should advise people to abstain entirely. But after a major new analysis of global data, the experts behind the study have reached fresh conclusions. Higher Health Risks Young people face higher health risks from alcohol consumption than older adults, they say. But they add that adults aged 40 and older without underlying health conditions may benefit from limited alcohol consumption. It means a small glass of red wine a day could reduce risk in cardiovascular disease, stroke and diabetes. Their findings, published in The Lancet, are the first to report alcohol risk by geographical region, age, sex, and year. They suggest that global alcohol consumption recommendations should be based on age and location. Strictest guidelines should be given for men aged 15 to 39, who are at the greatest risk of harmful alcohol consumption worldwide. Our message is simple, young people should not drink, but older people may benefit from drinking small amounts. This is according to the senior author, Dr. Emanuela Gakedu, Professor of Health Metric Sciences at the University of Washington School of Medicine. 
While it may not be realistic to think young adults will abstain from drinking, we do think it's important to communicate the latest evidence so that everyone can make informed decisions about their health. A total of 1.34 billion people are estimated to have consumed harmful amounts of alcohol in 2020, according to the analysis of drinking habits in 204 countries. The study, published in The Lancet, found that 59% of those who drank harmful amounts were aged 15 to 39. These are the people, for whom alcohol provided no health benefit and posed risks, including injuries relating to drinking or car accidents, suicides or murders. Three quarters of harmful drinkers were men. Researchers looked at the risk of alcohol consumption on 22 health outcomes, including injuries, cardiovascular diseases, and cancers, using 2020 global burden of disease data. Using this information, the researchers were able to estimate how much alcohol a person could drink before taking on excess risk to their health compared with someone who did not drink any alcohol. They found that the level of alcohol that could be consumed without increasing health risks increased throughout a lifetime. Researchers deemed a standard drink as a 100 ml glass of 13% alcohol red wine or a 375 ml can or bottle of 3.5% beer. They found that for men aged 15 to 39, the recommended amount of alcohol before risking health loss was just 0.136 of a standard drink a day. For women of the same age, the theoretical minimum risk exposure level was 0.273 drinks, about a quarter of a standard drink a day. For adults of 40 and older without any underlying health conditions, drinking a small amount of alcohol was linked to some health benefits, such as reducing the risk of ischemic heart disease, stroke and diabetes. Among those aged 40 to 64, safe alcohol consumption levels ranged from about half a standard drink a day to almost two standard drinks. For those aged 65 or older, the risks of health loss from alcohol consumption were reached after consuming a little more than three standard drinks a day. But on average, the recommended alcohol intake for adults over the age of 40 remained low, peaking at 1.87 standard drinks a day. After that the health risks increased with each drink, The Lancet reported. Separate research published in the journal Plus Medicine on Thursday found consumption of seven or more units of alcohol a week was associated with higher iron levels in the brain. Iron in the brain has been linked to Alzheimer's and Parkinson's diseases and is a potential mechanism for alcohol-related cognitive decline. Dr. Richard Piper, Chief Executive of Alcohol Change UK, said, The emerging science on alcohol, over hundreds of studies over the past 20 years, is telling us very clearly that alcohol is very damaging to the human body in multiple ways. We were previously unaware of this, and too many of us continue to drink as though this revolution in our knowledge hasn't happened. If you care about your health, by far the best approach is not to drink at all. Medical Advice If you do choose to drink alcohol, listen properly to the UK's chief medical officers. Their advice is not to exceed 14 units a week, about 6 pints of lager or a bottle and a half of wine. You should have at least 3 alcohol-free days a week, and never exceed more than 6 units in one day. What is Alcohol Use Disorder? Alcohol Use Disorder is a medical condition involving frequent or heavy alcohol use. People with Alcohol Use Disorder can't stop drinking, even when it causes problems, emotional distress or physical harm to themselves or others. Is Alcohol Use Disorder a Disease? Alcohol Use Disorder is a medical condition. It's a disease of brain function and requires medical and psychological treatments to control it. Alcohol use disorder can be mild, moderate or severe. It can develop quickly or over a long period of time. It's also called alcohol dependence, alcohol addiction or alcohol abuse. What are the stages of alcohol use disorder? Alcohol use that turns into a use disorder develops in stages. At risk stage, this is when you drink socially or drink to relieve stress or to feel better you may start to develop a tolerance for alcohol. Early Alcohol Use Disorder In this stage, you have progressed to blackouts, drinking alone or in secret and thinking about alcohol a lot. Mid-Stage Alcohol Use Disorder Your alcohol use is now out of control and causes problems with daily life, work, family, financial, physical and mental health. Organ damage can be seen on lab tests and scans. End stage alcohol use disorder Drinking is now the main focus of your life, to the exclusion of food, 
intimacy, health and happiness. Despair, complications of organ damage and death are now close. How is alcohol use disorder treated? Treatment may include a combination of Behavioral therapies, counseling, or talk therapy, with a health care provider like a psychologist or mental health counselor can teach you ways to change your behavior. Motivational, cognitive behavioral, contingency and 12-step facilitation are the most commonly used techniques. Medications, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has approved naltrexone and a camphorate for the treatment of alcohol use disorder. Topiramid and gabapentin can also decrease cravings in some people. An older medication, disulfiram, is now used only rarely. These medications seem to help decrease the background obsessional thinking around alcohol. Support groups, group meetings with other alcoholics can help you stay sober. Alcoholics Anonymous, AA, meetings are usually free and are available in most communities. Other styles of recovery groups include, Celebrate, Recovery, Christian Focus, Rational Recovery, Non-Spiritual, and Recovery Dharma, Mindfulness or Buddhist Focus. Your treatment setting will depend on your stage of recovery and the severity of your illness. You may need inpatient medical, hospital, residential rehabilitation, rehab, outpatient intensive therapy or outpatient maintenance.